Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, let's talk about a new JavaScript API, which is a temporal API. And it is, and it will be, not it is, it will be the end of date object in JavaScript for the most part, because temporal API consists of a lot more methods and a lot more flexibility in syntax compared to what the original date object has to offer. If you're interested in going through the whole API spec, I would recommend going to tc39.es and just take a look at this article I'll leave the link for this article in the description of this video as well. But you can see that there are some obvious issues with the date object, right? You can see that there are some issues which temporal API definitely fixes with date object, but a lot of issues or a lot of things are actually new in temporal object as well. Now you might think about that. Why not just fix the date object and extend it to include more functionalities? Well, that can be done as this blog post lists that there are a few things which are fixable, but the concept of web in its itself is that a web wants to not break itself moving forward. That means a website that is working in 1999 should work in 2022 as well. Similarly, a website which is working in 2022 should work, let's say in 2050 as well. That means that you can't modify existing browser APIs, right? If you want to improve them, you have to introduce new APIs. And that is what is exactly happening with the temporal API. So let's take a quick look at what this API exactly is where the support for this is currently and how to use it in your code bases. Now, first things first, this API right here is experimental right now. It's in stage three. That means it has not been fully finalized. So there might be a few changes, bug fixes and feature additions as well. But this API right here is not really available in browsers as of now, right? This talk which we are having is a little future talk. Once this API is stable, and browsers have implemented it, you would be able to access temporal just like a global variable or just like how you access date, for example, currently, you would be able to access temporal. I mean, we do have temporal on this page at least because I'm pretty sure they might be including some polyfills or something. But let's say if we try it out on Google, then you can see that temporal on this page is not available. On this page, they have made it available because of, well, you know, this is the documentation page. So they might have made a polyfill or something available. So how do you work with it currently? Let us go to code damn playgrounds now and try to create a fresh playground demo for temporal api demo using polyfills and i'm just going to create it as a react playground you can create it as an html or any other playground as well just react just gives us the flexibility of hot module reloading and installing packages right away so you can see while our react app sets up what we can do is we can install a package known as this js temporal slash polyfill so if i copy this and because we use yarn and if i use yarn to install this, I'll say yarn at JS temporal slash polyfill. And you're gonna see once I do that, I would be able to import the temporal object. Remember I told you that this temporal object will be available in your browsers by default when this is shipped in browsers. But for as of now, you can just import it and start working with it using the temporal API. And you can see the moment I write temporal dot, you're going to see all the methods which are available inside code damp playgrounds on this API. So what we can do is we can go back to the documentation and start looking at a few methods. You can see temporal dot now is an object and dot instant gives us the, you know, a date dot now type things time zone let's start with that temporal dot now dot you can see how many methods this also contains thanks to the code damn playground intelligence and if i let's say if i try to render this time as follows you would be able to see if i give it a refresh you might have to give it a two string as well because as you can see it is an object inside of javascript now you can see that it outputs a string representation of the whole object now this contains a lot of information from year to month to seconds and to time zone information and so on so you can see that this api is a little more complete it's a little more easy to work with for example if you want to add let's say days to this api what you can do to add days for example is use add and then specify an object which can take these things for example i can say hours i want to add 33 hours to this and this is gonna return me a new instance right so it's gonna return me a new instance and again like i said all the objects in this temporal api are immutable that means they are they can only be changed they will not be updated themselves you can see now we have just added 33 hours or if i just change this to one for clarity you can see exactly one hour has been added in this difference time and instance right 
So it makes it easy to work with time and numbers. What I have not seen in the documentation at least is that the formatting thing is still missing, which is the primary reason, for example, which we use libraries like DayJS, for example, for formatting time into hours, minutes, seconds, and so on. So maybe that gets included, maybe that does not get included, but that would not mean that other libraries like Moment and DayJS would end. It just means that you would probably not use a lot more date.now or date new date instances once this temporal api launches and gets stable in browsers because this is a much better and verbose and a cleaner version of working with date and times in javascript so yeah that's pretty much it for this video hopefully you liked a new version of this temporal api that is all for this one i'm gonna see you in the next one really soon if you're still watching this video make sure you comment down in the comment section i watched this video till the end also if you're not part of code dumps discord community you are missing out out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code you already know the drill make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and thank you so much for watching